there's a fine line between perfume and poison. In honor of spooky season, all October long, I'm going to be doing some deep dives into the darker side of fragrance. Let's kick it off with the tale of Lady Vengeance and her poison, Aqua Tafana, which had fun nicknames like Murder in a Bottle and Inheritance Powder. Julia Tafana was born in Palermo around 1620-ish, and when she was 13 years old, her mother was executed for murdering her father with a homemade poison. It's believed that before she died, she passed the recipe on to her daughter, who then escaped to Rome. Let's back up for a second though and talk about what it would have been like to be a woman in 17th century uber-Catholic Italy. Your options were basically arranged marriage by your father to a husband who might be awful or sex worker. Divorce was absolutely out of the question, so not great options there. The other thing to note is that there was an occult underground at this time, consisting of fortune tellers, astrologers, abortionists, and witches, and they would all band together to target noble women. And what's fascinating about that is you see this power structure in other instances throughout history, and we'll talk about more of those in the parts to come. Okay, she's in Rome. She has a recipe for a poison that is made up of arsenic, lead, and belladonna. It's undetectable. It's colorless. It's odorless. There's no taste. So what does she do? She goes on to help murder 600 men over the course of her 30-year career. How'd she do it? Well, first, she'd get connected with a woman who wanted to kill her husband from that occult underground that I talked to you about, who would vet the person, make sure that they were trustworthy because you didn't want anybody to snitch on you. Noble women were targeted because not only did they have money to pay, but they had husbands of means who could then potentially change their will. She and six other poisoners in her circle would brew up some aqua tafana and they'd put it in a vial like this with a picture of St. Nicholas. Why St. Nicholas? Because he saved three women from prostitution, so he is the patron saint of unmarried women. Anyway, so this bottle could hold perfume, skincare oil, any number of things that wouldn't arouse suspicion for a woman to have on hand. Once a woman had it, she could take her time poisoning her husband drop by drop over days, weeks, or months. It was a slow death. And it was ingenious because it seemed like the person had developed a terminal illness. So there wasn't a poison suspicion, and men also had time to change their wills so their wives would be taken care of after his death, thus calling it inheritance powder. Noblemen in Italy were freaking out, which, good, keep that fear. We don't know a lot about Julia, but there are three versions of her death that could have potentially happened. She could have died peacefully without ever getting caught for her crime, a widow who got cold feet confessed, told on Julia, and she was captured and tortured. My favorite, though, is that she fled to a convent, continued making aqua tafana, and the nuns were the ones that passed it out to women. Fun fact, Mozart actually thought that he was poisoned by aqua tafana in his final days. That's the story of aqua tafana. Stay tuned for part two.